Excuse me, little dog. Alright, guys. Well, it is a gray, gloomy start to the new Doom year. 2023 is off to a gloomy, gray, yuck start here. It is a Sunday. It is Sunday, January 1st, 2023. And here we go again, guys. I cannot believe it. What a rocket ride that one was. And here we go again. So uh, anyone who has known me here on Collapse Chronicles and other iterations on YouTube <clears throat> that we don't need to talk about right now knows that what I do every year on today is I come out here and give my Doomer predictions for the new year. I go through, I pick out 10 Doomer predictions uh, for the new year. Uh, but the problem is, guys, uh, if you've ever heard one of my New Year's predictions any time in the past 10 years, you've heard them all because every year I, I, I just come out here with the uh, No Shit Sherlock uh, predictions. And uh, good Lord, you know, just going down the usual list of suspects. Uh, to chart, you know, trying to base predictions on past behavior is getting a, getting a little bit tougher. Well, in the, you know, 10 years ago, it was probably tougher to do doomsday predictions based on the old normal because the old normal, instead of going like this, was going like this. But after 10 years of doing it, uh, so I'm, I, 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 I did just go back and listen to any other one. Listen to the one I made a year ago today. But uh, I know that uh, some folks still confuse this channel with a climate change channel, uh, especially you new folks uh, joining us. I do want to thank our brand new 2,200 new subscribers, 2,200 new subscribers coming over here from Soft White Underbelly, trying to figure out what this channel is all about and what I'm all about. And uh, if you think that what this is, is a climate change channel, I, you know, I bet... I've had over 500 comments from uh, clueless moron normies listening to uh, to my uh, soft white underbelly uh, video. You would think by their comments that I came on and talked about climate for 40 straight minutes. I think I might have mentioned climate change in passing. If I spent 40 seconds out of 40 minutes talking about climate change, uh, this is, for any of you guys not aware, uh, this is my position on climate change. That climate change or climate catastrophe, whatever you want to call it, what it is, is one more symptom of overshoot. Okay? This is an overshoot channel. Uh, climate, there, there's... Uh, again, you know, I don't know how many people down here are new to the Doomosphere, so I, I might risk talking a little bit ABCs of Doom uh, with, with all our new uh, people just coming over here, I'm sure you have heard something about nine planetary boundaries. Okay, climate change is one of nine planetary boundaries. That once you cross a planetary boundary, all of these tipping points are going to start coming in. And... Uh, 
I, I'm not going to go through all nine of them now. That's another rant for another day. Although I could say that every one of these planetary tipping points, we are closer... And, and by some measure, I'm pretty sure Manga Bay is now saying that we have already uh, passed four of them, that we've already stepped over four boundaries, and I think getting ready to step uh, over two more boundaries. So what, one prediction is that uh, another way of saying what I say every year uh, my prediction is we are going to be closer to stepping over more planetary boundaries on December 31st, 2023, than we are now. Every, every one of the nine planetary boundaries, if we don't step over them, you, you see what I'm saying? Uh, we're moving deeper and deeper into uh, tipping point territory, which is also, I guess, another way of saying that uh, on December 31st of this year, uh, we are going to, if we haven't directly passed some more tipping points this year, that we're going to be a lot closer uh, one year from now than we are today, and, and this is what I say every year, essentially. is what I say every year based on every single metric, every single metric, from climate change, biodiversity loss, species extinction, uh, plastic pollution, uh, it, any one uh, of the metrics of doom that you want to pick out, uh, every single one of them. Uh, it, 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 the news is worse today than it was on January 1st of 2022, just as the news will be worse on every single level on December 31st, uh, 2023 as it is on January 1st, and that really is my prediction, that it doesn't matter what you're talking about anymore. There, there, there's going to be a few tiny, tiny, tiny little rays of, uh, you know, false hope. Uh, you know, maybe some endangered species uh, they're, they're, they're going to find, uh, you know, some little colony of some bat that they had thought had gone extinct a few years ago. You, you, you know, the mainstream media, the apocalyptimists are, are, are going to, just like they're doing today, you better believe that all these apocalyptimists are, are combing through, finding all of these good news uh, environmental stories uh, for uh, 2022. It's getting harder and harder to do that roundup every year. Uh, but anyway, I was saying about climate change, it's one of nine planetary boundaries. That's one thing that I say about it. Okay, the other thing that I have said till I'm uh, blue in the face, that if climate change was nowhere, nowhere in the cards. If humans had nothing to do with climate change, we still have eight other planetary boundaries and, and all of their uh, attendant tipping points. Uh, you know, right now, I think biodiversity loss is a bigger problem than climate change. And the third thing that uh, I, I say about climate change, which ties right into my predictions about climate change, is that right now, okay, if it, 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 let's say if the nine planetary boundaries were nine horses in a horse race, that the climate change horse of the apocalypse is number nine in the pack. 
in, in, in many ways, right now, he's still the dark horse, but with each passing year, the climate change horse is going to gain on the other eight horses and somewhere down the line and uh, you know as as each year passes and as these tipping points these climate tipping points get bigger and bigger uh, the climate change dark horse is going to be bigger and bigger but by the time the climate change dark horse goes from the back of the pack to the front of the pack uh, we're, we're, we're probably going to be long gone anyway, which I think if you uh, be noticing this fellow named Book Hermit, who I still let comment here, I think this is Book Hermit and I agree on this, uh, that by the time climate catastrophe becomes the biggest threat uh, to life on this planet, that uh, all of these others, uh, things. Well, well, well the, the climate change won't have any anything to do by the time it. Uh, but uh, since I know so many people do like climate predictions, I'm going to go over to Wired magazine. I noticed a couple of other doomers are talking about this article. Uh, I know Robert Hunziker talking about this article over there at Medium Digest, bringing up this article from Wired Magazine a few days ago titled, El Nino is coming and the world is not prepared. Global heating will set the stage for extreme weather everywhere in 2023. The consequences are likely to be cataclysmic and uh, this is written by uh, I think this is actually written by Bill McGuire uh, I think see Wired magazine uh, like in this one nowhere nowhere on this article uh, okay here we go yeah Bill McGuire so who is Bill McGuire uh, he is a, I, I've had other essays by him, they don't have, uh, unfortunately, they don't have Bill's, uh, Bill's, uh, unbelievable. You go on, you click on Bill McGuire, he is definitely, uh, well, Hun over here at Hunziker, let's see, Bill McGuire is Emeritus Professor of Geophysical and Climate Hazards at University College in London. Okay, so uh, this is Bill McGuire's uh, predictions for 2023. I'm not going to read the whole article. You can find it. I, I will put the link on here. It was not that long of an article. Uh, for Bill McGuire, what will happen in 2023, the relentless increase in global heating will continue bringing ever more disruptive weather. That is the signature calling card of accelerating climate breakdown. Uh, according to NASA, 2022 was one of the hottest years ever recorded on Earth. This is extraordinary because the recurrent climate pattern across the tropical uh, Pacific was in its cool phase. You, you know that we've been in this La Nina. Uh, and that La Nina should be helping to keep a lid on global Temperatures. So if, 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 if a La Nina year is one of the hottest uh, years on record, what is going to happen when, not if, but we're all waiting for La Nina to flip over into El Nino, and that is when 
uh, we are completely doomed. Now, <coughs> Bill McGuire is being very careful. He's not predicting when El Nino will get here. He's not even 100% predicting that El Nino will get here at all in 2023. He does think so, but the, the earlier El Nino gets here, the more doomed uh, we are. Uh, the scary thing is that this La Nina will end and eventually transition into the better known El Nino, which sees the waters of the equatorial Pacific becoming much warmer. And when, you know, when that happens, so when it does, when it does uh, happen, the extreme weather that has rampaged across our planet in 2021 and 2022 will pale into insignificance. Current forecasts suggest that this La Nina will continue early into this year, uh, which is a good thing for us. Then the equatorial Pacific will begin to warm again, whether or not it becomes hot enough for a fully fledged El Nino to develop. 2023 has a very good chance without the cooling influence of a La Nina of being the hottest year on record. Uh, I will not be surprised one bit if uh, 2023 is the hottest year on record. Um, and then he talks all about the, you know, the, this famous one and a half degree C joke, uh, pointing out that even with La Nina, We've come, to, uh, we've brushed up against, according to Bill McGuire, 1.2 C. Um, and 2021, and actually, uh, we were up to 1.36 C before the La Nina brought it back down a, a tiny notch. But as the heat builds again in 2023, it is perfectly possible that we will touch or even exceed one and a half C for the first time. Uh, but what will this mean exactly? I would not be at all surprised to see the record for the highest temperature uh, the, the highest recorded temperature, just a, a shade below 130 Fahrenheit in California's Death Valley shattered. This could well happen somewhere in the Middle East or South Asia where temperatures could climb above 55 C or 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat this year could exceed the blistering 40C mark again in the UK and for the first time top 50 degrees C in parts of Europe. Uh, inevitably, the, these higher temperatures will mean that severe drought will continue to be the order of the day slashing crop yields in many parts of the world. Uh, food stocks are likely to be lower than normal going into 2023, so another round of poor harvest could be devastating, resulting food shortages in most countries could drive civil unrest while rising prices, you can, uh, good Lord, I just I had the most expensive grocery bill of my life here a couple
couple of days ago. And uh, you don't have to go far. Uh, one of the worst affected regions anywhere will be right here in the good old U.S. of A, the U.S. Southwest. Uh, everyone keeping their eye on those high, big hydropower dams. And do not forget uh, El Nino's effects on hurricanes as La Nina begins to fade hurricane activity can be expected to pick up uh, so it's especially depending on when El Nino if, if El Nino gets here early the higher global temperatures expected in 2023 could see extreme heating of the Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico surface waters this would favor the formation and persistence of super hurricanes powering winds and storm surges capable of wiping out a major U.S. city should they strike land. Uh, hurricanes today are both more powerful and wetter, so the consequences of a city Getting in the way of a superstorm in 2023 would likely be cataclysmic. So you heard it from uh, the uh, professor em emeritus of uh, what, what was he climate hazards? But anyway, guys, uh, I'm I'm totally with Bill on all of this. It, it, it's just anything can happen. Uh, you know, I guess that's just one of the, the, the uh, new abnormal predictions is that anything can happen and, and, and nothing uh, is, is going to surprise me. But the bottom line is as, uh, and, and, then I, and, and then I had articles uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, the chance of nuclear war in 2023. It's going to be interesting to see if they move the hands of the doomsday clock. I think don't they check the hands of the doomsday clock sometime in the next few weeks, I believe. Uh, will the doomsday clock get any closer to midnight? My guess, I, I, I mean... They have to move it closer to midnight, but they can't move it much closer to midnight before doomsday. Um, you, you know, all of these articles talking about uh, that we're heading into a depression here, uh, both in this country and on the planet. People, uh, economists uh, who know a hell of a lot more uh, about all of these economic cycles and uh, all of this crap that the Fed is, is you know, uh, look at the, the uh, real estate. I just got this thing uh, from, I, I, you know, I sold a house a couple of years ago. And uh, so Zillow keeps uh, checking in with every three months. I get a, uh, I, I, I hear from Zillow what's going on with the value of the house I sold. Well, I sold a house in the spring of 2020. Uh, good Lord. I sold it for $162,000. Uh, within two years, so about, I think it was, so every three months, I think it was nine months ago, they said my $162,000 house was worth $346,000. Three months later, six months ago, it was worth $324,000. Three months ago, the house I sold for one sixty-two dollars was now worth $302,000. But on January 1st, 2023, the house that I sold for $162,000 in the spring of 2020 
that was valued at $302,000 90 days ago, now valued according to Zillow at $157,000. Almost right about one half of what they uh, had this place valued at uh, 90 days ago. One half. And $5,000 less than I sold it in the spring of 2020. Uh, you know, all these uh, economic indicators, of course, being a, a real estate investor and house flipper, I'm always fascinated by this. Housing prices, we have not have not seen the bottom of housing prices. Uh, we're seeing a little relief at the gas pump. That's going back up. Energy prices are going to keep going up. Food prices are going to keep going up. Uh, it, 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 anywhere you want to look. But uh, anyway, I think you get the point. So, uh, and, and, and I, can, I can make a new prediction uh, after uh, you know, looking at my 5,000 comments, uh, you, you know, on soft white underbelly, about 4,000 uh, which are extremely negative, you know, basically calling me a nutcase. I, I am a clueless moron nutcase for talking about this. And... My guess is, is, is that if I went on so, south, little soft white underbelly in a year uh, and, and made basically saying what I just said right now, that 80% of the clueless moron normies would, uh, would listen to uh, me doing my predictions next year. And they would say, I'm an absolute, I, I, I am a doomer, clueless moron, shut up doomer, blah, blah, blah. And that uh, the, the clueless moron masses are going to go right on denying, denying, denying. Uh, so anyway, uh, what can I say? Get out there and enjoy... Uh, 2023 while you still can. Now, later in the week, I'm going to be doing one or even two uh, videos about my term, Get Out There and Enjoy It While You Still Can. We're going to be talking quite a bit. Uh, Elliot Jacobson and I are going to be uh, getting in. I don't know if it's so much a friendly debate as it is an amplification and clarification about where he and I and, and Doomer stand. But I love this t-shirt. I want to thank Katie. I think she actually sent Sandy this t-shirt. But uh, she's Katie's the same one who sent me the Sorry We're Fuck t-shirt. So this is the sound of existential dread. The sound of existential dread which is a skeleton dancing. So that is the sound of... Uh, <laughs> it's a perfect example of get out there and enjoy it. You know, knowing that you're doomed. Not knowing basically that you're the walking dead. You might as well be a skeleton. But uh, look at this beautiful day uh, here in the Collapse. Uh, we still have snow on the top of mountains. You, you, you know, we still have rainbows. Uh, uh, there you go. And uh, so all of you uh, walking dead, get out there and dance while you still can. But uh, that's my, that is always my new message. And as, as we come into to this. Get out there and enjoy the sound of existential dread. The sound of existential dread. Oh boy, I'm heading to the big 
city of Buffalo, New York. And the first time in my entire life going up to Buffalo, New York, where they just had <laughs> that winter. So I don't know if we'll have a chronicle tomorrow or not from Buffalo. Anyway, what are your predictions? I would absolutely let out if I missed anything. If anyone just has a prediction burning uh, for them, uh, let me hear it. Otherwise, I'm going to get out and enjoy the sound of existential dread as 2023 rolls in. Bye, guys.